So it's been a little while since I've made some kind of in-depth videos about Unity's Entity Component System, but now that I have my new computer here, I'm kind of getting that itch to get right back into some hardcore ECS development. But there are still some things that I need to wrap up before I can dive straight back into ECS development, uh, namely the Balloons Tower Defense clone that I'm recreating in the Unity game engine. I'm getting really close to finishing that one out, so I think it's just really important for me that I wrap that project up before moving into some other awesome things with ECS. But anyways, I thought it would be a good idea to kind of ease back into things. I'm um, just doing a little video today, just looking at kind of the current state of Unity's ECS. ECS. And what I wanted to do is just kind of go over some of the recent changes that were made to Unity's Entity Component System, uh, because just a couple weeks ago they did put out um, the 0.17 update for all the Entities packages, and it's a very extensive update. It's one of, if not the largest updates, if you just look at the change log um, about how many things that they added, removed, changed to this. Um, if there are any people who are still kind of doubting that ECS is in development, I know there are some people out there who think that. Um, this is really just proof that ECS is absolutely in full steam of development right now. Um, there are There's a lot of things going on, and I'm really excited to see what ECS has to offer over the coming months. Uh, but before we get into the change log and all the things that were added to Unity's entities packages, I do just want to remind you that Unity is hosting a Lunar New Year's Mega Bundle. So this is one of these humble bundle type sales that they'll do on the asset store where they basically have different tiers of things that you can buy. So for example, if you pay $9.99, you get these three assets here. Uh, for $19.99, you get a couple more assets, including this one Japanese alley asset, um, which I think is incredibly beautiful. It normally sells for $120. And again, you get that along with a bunch of other asset packs for only $20. Um, and if you go all the way up for the $30 package, you get a bunch more assets here. And if you are feeling a little bit extra generous, you can donate a little bit more um, to get your name on the top 10 contributors list here. So a little high score there for you. So feel free to use the link then in the description so you can go check out that sale. Once again, I am an affiliate of the Unity Asset Store. So if you do end up purchasing something, I may receive a small little bit of commission of that. So this is not only a great way that you can get some a uh, bunch of really cool asset packs for an extremely cheap price, but you can also support the Turbo Mix Games YouTube channel as well. And speaking of the supporting the Turbo Mix Games YouTube channel, make sure that you hit that like button and also feel free to subscribe to this channel for lots more videos about Unity's Entity Component System. If you do have any questions for me or suggestions for future videos, you can always leave those down in the comment section below. So once again, this is one of the biggest changelog entries that we've gotten to the Entity Component System pretty much ever. So as such, I'm not going to be going through everything like line by line because uh, frankly that would take way too long and there are a lot of things in here that are kind of outside of my area of knowledge when it comes to ECS. You know, going through this list of things just reminded me of how, how much I still have to learn about ECS and so that is extremely exciting to me and trust me, all of you watching are going to be learning right alongside me as I learn through this myself. So let's just go through some of the highlights and some of the things that I found particularly interesting. I will leave a link to the full change log down in the description below so you can check that out if you do want to see everything that was actually changed. So for things that were added, they added some new entity command buffer methods that will affect a set of entities in a query. So we can do some adding and removing of components as well as destroying entities using these methods. Uh, the difference here is that the entities are basically captured uh, during record time rather than playback time. So maybe if you knew there might be some difference between uh, your entities when you're actually recording them in your command buffer versus when you're playing them back, then you might want to use one method or the other because there are some existing methods that basically capture those entities at playback time. They've added in a new entities.with filter that takes in a native array of filtered entities. And so that allows for filtering with a specific set of entities in addition to the entity query requirements. So this basically just allows us to further filter our entity queries so we can find the specific entities that we're looking for um, of a smaller group. So nice to be able to filter just a little bit more so we can kind of reduce some of the data overhead. They also added in live conversion debug logging to make it more easily to see what's recorded. 
Um, you can basically just enable this from the dots live link mode menu, just turning on the incremental conversion logging. And so I've yet to play around with this myself, but it sounds like, you know, this is basically just a good debugging thing um, that if you feel like maybe some things in the conversion process aren't happening correctly, you can turn this on and you can kind of get more details about what's actually happening with the conversion process. Again, I haven't used that, but that's kind of my understanding of what is going on with this. And they also added some UI specific things to Project Tiny. I know I'm certainly interested in uh, playing around with Project Tiny myself. So let me know if that is something that you wanna see. But anyways, we have support for nine slice, which is basically how we can just kind of give like a square sprite and splice it up in nine ways. So that's basically how we can make resizable buttons and we can keep the corners intact. They also added in text alignment as well as multi-line text. I know these are you know pretty standard UI things, but I know Project Tiny was like so extremely lightweight that they kind of like held off on implementing a lot of these pretty much basic seeming features. I know there was a kind of a point where you couldn't really do any sort of UI at all. You basically just had to like kind of fake it with images. So it's good to see that it's getting support for these more or less basic features. So talking about some of the things that changed, the minimum editor version is now 2020.1.2. So just bringing that minimum editor version up a little bit more. And one of the interesting things that they changed is they made the system base as well as the job component system classes as partial classes in preparation for use of Rosalind source generators for code generation, and they say more to come. So it'd be really interesting to see what they do with some of the code generation stuff. I looked into the Rosalind code generation stuff just a little bit just to see what it was all about because it wasn't something that I'm really familiar with, and it seems like it's something that's a pretty newish feature to C Sharp. Microsoft basically brought it into a preview form of April of last year. And it's kind of interesting because it actually analyzes your code during compile time and can actually generate new source code at that step. So it's similar to reflection, but again, it's happening at compile time as opposed to runtime. And I will leave another link down in the description for some more information on uh, the Roslyn C Sharp source generators. They also removed a bunch of outdated code. Um, so if you do try and use that, well, you're gonna get an error because it doesn't exist anymore. Realistically, most of the stuff that was changed is just kind of like general bug fixes for seemingly kind of like weird edge cases. So if there are any kind of like weird edge cases that you're running into, Maybe go check out the change log and see if it fixes your issues. Anyways, those are kind of the main things that I wanted to go over in the Entities 0.17 change log. Again, as you can tell, these aren't like really major developments, but there are just a ton of things in there. So what this basically tells me is that ECS isn't necessarily going through as many radical changes as it once was. Basically, kind of how it is now is kind of how it's going to be. Of course, they're, you know, adding in some quality of life things that are going to make development a lot easier. Um, and they're just kind of removing some things that are outdated and irrelevant. So at this point, it's like, yes, things are changing. But at the same time, um, they're just kind of building more towards that stable release. And again, with a change log this big, this just tells me that there are a lot of people over at Unity working hard on bringing ECS to uh, the public. And so I'm excited to get back into some ECS programming and play around more with it myself. So let me know down in the comments section below what are some of your favorite things that came out in the latest release of the Unity's entities packages, um, whether it be something that I mentioned here or something that I didn't mention that's just in this massive change log. And continue to let me know what sort of things that you're interested in seeing as I get back into ECS development. And once again, head over to the Unity Asset Store where you can check out the Lunar New Year Mega Bundle Sale. I think it's an incredible value. You can get some uh, really cool asset packs at an extremely discounted price. Anyways, if you guys enjoyed today's video, I'd really appreciate it if you hit that like button. Also, feel free to subscribe to the channel for lots more videos about Unity's data-oriented technology stack and their entity component system. Of course, if you do have any questions for me or suggestions for future videos, you can always leave those down in the comment section below. Hope you all have a fantastic rest of your day. I'll see you in the next one.